Thank you for that introduction as the senior correspondent. It's a sort of a nod to the Daily Show. Um, I'm the senior storytelling correspondent here, apparently. Well, as many of you may know, I, I worked for the Daily News Monitor for a long time, uh, several years, about 35, I think, actually. And um, I think maybe there's two things that I might have done the most often. One was write either a headline or a story that said, gas pipeline to be built any day now. <laughs> and and I'm really, I'm really, I did that first in 1977. <laughs> the other thing that I did a lot of was to talk to people who came to Fairbanks and who thought that because they came to Fairbanks, it was a newsworthy event. <laughs> and, you know, and uh, from time to time, it was, from time to time. But there were, I talked to people who rode bikes, and who walked, and who rode horses, drove Model Ts. But one of the first events I did of this kind, one of the first stories, was assigned to me by uh, the, the managing editor at the News Monitor, Kent Sturgis, who happened to be running a bed and breakfast at the time. And so lo and behold, he had an interesting guest at his bed and breakfast. And he said, you know, you ought to go over there and talk to this guy. He, he's, he's very interesting. So I said, okay, whatever you want, I'll do it. I must tell you, by the way, for those of you who don't know, this happened in 1982. So it was a while ago before some of you were born. So I went to his bed and breakfast and I met a man I've never forgotten, even though I only met him once and for about you know, half an hour. His name was Martin Cutts. And um, there were two things I noticed right away. One, that his false teeth were in a glass next to his bed. I noticed that right away. And the second thing I noticed is that he couldn't hear anything I said <laughs> because he didn't have a hearing aid and he was just about totally deaf. So I'll have to sort of uh, move the microphone away while I explain how we talked. We introduced each other. I introduced myself to him and told him what I was doing. And I think he eventually got the idea because I had to shout in his ear. So I was shouting. I was shouting. I, Robin was that uh, too loud. I hope it went out. But anyway. So I was shouting at him, and he was shouting at me, because he, he couldn't hear himself. <laughs> um, he, he was a, but he was a very interesting guy. He was 88 years old, and he was traveling by himself. But he put his false teeth in, but he couldn't, did, didn't have a hearing aid, so you know, we just kept shouting at each other. And anybody walking you know, within about 100 yards would, I thought, what are those two guys arguing about? <laughs> but he said, like, I'm a person that has to move, you know. I can't stay in one place. So that's what he told me. So, and, then, and then he would go like this to try to hear what I was shouting at him. So he was a retired dairy farmer from Buffalo, Minnesota. That's where he was from. And he said he came to Fairbanks because he wanted to go to the end of the world. And that's kind of what all these people who come to Fairbanks and think it's newsworthy. That's it. Oh, this is the end of the world. And, and, and it's, I'm, I'm here, so it must be really important. Um, and it is. And it's an accomplishment. They consider it something. So he, he had gone, he took a Wee and Air Alaska flight the day before, uh, went up to Barrow, you know, saw a blanket toss, et cetera, et cetera, and, you know, saw the Arctic Ocean. And so he believed that really was the end of the world, and he had seen it, and he was really happy. He said a decade earlier, when he had his hearing aid, he went on a trip around the world um, flying. And he said it was, he had seen the end of the world in Japan and the end of the world in, in India. He kept talking about the end of the world. He's wanted to see. He wasn't like a, he, he he wasn't seeing the end. It wasn't the end of days type guy. But he was, you know, I don't know. He, he somehow had this 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 knowledge of geography. So he, um, I, I, and I wrote at the time. I thought the world when he was in Fairbanks was like a silent movie to him because he really couldn't hear anything that was going on <laughs> except when I was in his in his ear shouting at him. Um, and he told me all about his hearing aid. His daughter, one of his, he had two daughters in Minnesota. One of them had taken his hearing aid, which didn't work, and sent it back to the repair shop. And he said he had waited a month and a half. Now, I don't know, maybe he was exaggerating. But he says a month and a half, and he couldn't wait any longer, and he had to leave. So he got on the bus, and he rode the bus from Minnesota to Fairbanks. And he said he really liked the bus, because he could see the scenery. 
I mean, he didn't mind flying, and he said in the future he was not going to hang around bus stations anymore. <laughs> he was going to fly. So he had dairy farms, and he was raining them out. And he said he had been sort of, uh, the doctors told him he had a wandering mind. And that maybe he better, you know, not go off by himself. But he said he wanted to keep traveling, and he wanted to go by himself. Uh, and and he, he also said he lived by the advice of his daughter, who said, you should live it up. No matter what age you are, you should live it up. That's just really important. And uh, he did tell me about where he lived. He lived in a place called the Buffalo Hills Residence. And I could tell he really did not want to be in the Buffalo Hills Residence. It was a, he, and, he, and he said this, uh, well, I wrote he said it sarcastically, but he said it was a, for active senior citizens. And <laughs> he said his idea of active was not using a wheelchair or a walker. And that's, that's, what this whole, that's what this whole place was about. So I wrote a column about him and his false teeth and his hearing aid and stuff, and it was okay. It was, it was good. And I thought I would never hear from him again, just like everybody else who comes to town and thinks it's sort of a, a, big, a big event. But this is why this, this stick sticks in my mind. About three, four weeks later, I got a letter from his daughter. And she said, uh, this is what she wrote. She said, Cam Martin, who is from Minnesota and is employed in Fairbanks, happened to buy your newspaper and spotted my dad's picture. Now, my dad had planned to visit Mr. Martin in Fairbanks, but somehow he forgot. <laughs> so this maybe was part of the wandering mind a bit, perhaps. Well, anyway, she said, Cam Martin is back in Minnesota for a couple weeks, and he brought the paper with him. She says, I happen to be the daughter he mentioned twice. His hearing aid finally came back <laughs> from being repaired right after he left for his trip. It seemed that hearing aids never helped him much. So this one may not have ever helped him either. But then she said, and this is, why this, this is why I remember this. She said, if it hadn't been for your article, we would have never known if my dad had made it to Alaska. <laughs> See, my dad died in a motel in Whitehorse, Yukon, Canada on July 15, 1982. It really did turn out to be the end of the world travels for him. Thank you. <laughs>